We are back again today in Way of the Hunter, and I wanted to start out this video by saying thank you to all of you for 338,000 subscribers. Now, with the release of this new game have come a lot of new subscribers, and I wanted to explain at least a little bit about what we're doing out here today. So basically, anytime we reach a milestone on this channel that coincides with a weapon caliber, really in any of the three games, the Hunter Classic, the Hunter Call of the Wild, or in this case, Way of the Hunter, we go for a hunt with that weapon and that weapon only. So today for 338,000 subscribers, we have the 338 Lapua. And I'm pretty excited for this. I just went and bought this gun last night. And obviously, with a caliber of this size, we'll be focusing on big games. So primarily Black Bear, Elk, and Moose here on Nesper's Valley, and maybe some Red Deer later on over in Transylvania. But we shall see if our brand new gun brings us any new luck. I think probably we'll head straight into Moose territory to get started. And that didn't take long at all. We went to that campsite and there's just a moose walking through the forest up here. I'll be honest, this is the first time I've encountered a moose not by the water. And it is a one star adult, so one that I think we should be taking. Also got a adult cow behind that. And there are at least two more back in there, including a two star adult bull. So that, actually that looks really good. That's one that we definitely want to let go. Now, they're kind of moving fairly quickly. The bull is all the way out front here, so it's going to be 220 yards away. And I guess we'll get to see just what the 338 Lapua can do right at the start here. Oh my goodness. Okay, I don't know if that was a hard shot or what happened. We also did a thing. I don't know what skill we may have unlocked. Evidently, that was our 90th. Heart, lung, or artery shot with a bolt action rifle, so 20% less recoil now, which I'm not sure how big a difference that's going to make. Probably one of the biggest things is going to be just being able to see some of the hit animations just a little bit better. Not often do we go for very many follow-up shots, but just drop that moose and its tracks, and I have said on quite a few occasions, I think the moose need to be buffed a little bit. It's rather absurd to be able to do that really with any caliber. But I do want to see where we hit. I felt like we took that shot with his right leg forward. So that kind of opens up the chest cavity to a heart shot a little bit more. Though I thought the last one we dropped was a heart shot and it turned out to just be double lung. That is pretty insane. I think he's actually nicely in the sun. Before we get too crazy, we'll take a picture of that. He is just a one star, so not going to spend too much time doing it. But... I remembered last time, even though we shot a couple of nice moves, I forgot to take any pictures. So this guy, we did just double lung shot, I think more or less right above the heart, maybe a little bit behind it there at 208 yards. And for that to just insta drop is absolutely insane. He was only 857 pounds, 53% genetics. I've seen young moves with about the same amount of antler. And I'm thinking those are going to have way better genetic potential, but only 875 credits. The meat loss from the 338 on a moose is 100 pounds. I mean, that's a lot. That's really indicative that the 338 is overpowered for them. So I wonder if the idea is just to be able to take some of those big game animals and really not have to track them. That might be the main purpose. I do think probably a moose there shouldn't be much meat loss with the biggest caliber in the game given the fact that they are the biggest animal in the game but if we don't have to track them i'm not going to complain much that allows us to just head straight to the next area now i'll be honest i actually was not aware that there were elk on this part of the map so pretty cool to see we can actually encounter them up in here as well and as far as i can tell most of them must be relatively low fitness that or just really old bulls that are Kind of subpar in terms of their antlers, maybe sort of past their prime. Now that was a two-star mature, a little bit better. And another bull coming down the hill there, which maybe even is a bit better than that. Gonna be tough to get everything kind of spotted, especially when they're all crammed into one area. But I think what we're gonna do is spot that one and see what he is. Make sure that's not anything maybe like younger with really good potential and then try to call one of them in and get them that way. I'm still trying to work on getting the 10 animals called in and sold to unlock the next level of calls. So with the opportunity here, I want to do that. There are a ton of bulls in here though. So one side of the coin, 
is going to be getting them to come in. The other side is getting them broadside to where we can actually take a shot. So any of the lower fitness bulls in theory should kind of start coming this way. I'm not sure if both of those bigger ones were two-star matures, but I haven't seen anything else through all the ones I've spotted. Now, the way that it works based on the encyclopedia is when you kind of reach that thicker white bar in the middle, that's when you want to call again. I think that kind of produces the maximum attraction to the elk. So we're pretty close to the middle. I'm going to keep scooting up this way so we have a better field of view, although maybe not from the roots of the tree. Well, another call here. And hopefully at least one of them kind of starts to come this way. He may be the only one. The rest are kind of just doing their thing, but this one star mature is kind of slowly sneaking his way over towards us. So we do want to continue to call. We're actually just past that bar, but I think we're still okay. And I'm not sure. It looks like he's still trying to come in. So finding a shot angle might be tough, but when he's well past the brush, we may just take a frontal heart shot. I've tried the neck on the elk, and with the 300 wind mag, I actually was able to hit the neck, but with too low energy and it ran off, eventually needed a second shot, so maybe he's gonna turn enough? That is so cool to see though, with the matures that are kind of past their prime. And man, to hear the elk in here bugling is so cool as well, but you see those uneven racks, that really just seems realistic. This is the coolest thing. I don't know if he's starting to become alert. I think we'll try this. I feel like I gotta not hit the shoulder. Luckily, we managed. Now that, we could shoot that. I'm gonna let him go because I think we're gonna hit him in the guts. But apparently, if you take a shot right about the time they are in their bugle animation, the spooking doesn't override that. But our second animal of the day, unfortunately, no picture happening here. But... That did go straight through the chest, actually in between the ribs, that probably helped us a bit, and right into the heart. They're at 33 yards. To have him, you know, basically full zoom in our scope, bugling and chuckling like that, I, I don't know, there's something about the vocalizations in this game that I don't think any other game can compete. 256 pounds of meat loss, which is really unfortunate. But even still, these animals are so big, we're doing okay to make some credits. And I actually, the other side of this, because we are hunting big game, I want to keep working to try to earn another 4,500 credits and purchase a pass to a new area. I don't know if we'll hunt there today, but because we're going to be earning credits, that's something I wanted to, to maybe do as a side goal, along with hunting with the 338 today. Now the wind here is not good, but... We do have another bull moose just kind of sneaking through the trees out there. I think he actually, he must be able to smell us. But it's a young one, I want to say its genetics are not that good based on the rack. So before he bolts, I think we can probably sneak a shot in there. At least he didn't insta drop, but it looks like he has hit pretty darn good. That's more so what I'd like to see from the moose. They kind of soak up a first shot pretty well. But as they run off, they'll eventually start to go down. And it looks like he's going to cover a good, I don't know, 120 yards or so. But not too bad. And I really hope I'm right about the genetics. The thing about it is, and I'll actually show in the encyclopedia, there are different stages of young, adult, and mature. So if we go into the animal section and down to moose, the age chart here, from ages 1 to 3, they're going to be young. 4 to 7 adult and 8 to 12 mature. So in theory, that could be like a 1 year old moose that doesn't have a very good rack yet for obvious reasons, or it could be a 2 or 3 year old with just not that good genetics. We'll find out when we get up there, but my guess based on other moose that I've seen is that he's probably going to be at least subpar. And I mean, if that cow is just going to sit there, it is a young one, but I don't think it's going to hurt to take it out. We might as well go for that too. It will earn us a little bit of credits. And that looks like... I was going to say more or less the same result, but that one went absolutely nowhere. I can't remember if we marked the location of the shot or where the bull laid down. So we'll run up here and see what's going on. I feel like it must have been 
more like where he laid down, because, yeah, I can actually see him there in the grass. So that'll be two laying probably within 100 yards of each other. But let's see what the genetics say on this guy. To me, it looks fairly small. It was a single lung shot on that one. I guess, yeah, that makes a lot of sense given the angle. So it didn't get into the second lung, and that explains why he ran as far as he did. Genetically, yeah, 45.25%. Definitely one worth taking out. Still got a 662 credits, despite, no doubt, a lot of meat waste. Our cow is going to be laying right up here as well. And by the way, we are going to reach 4,500 credits with this harvest. So definitely, I think, worthwhile to take it out. Probably not going to be a huge yield from this one. Only 318 credits. Double lung and... Did we hit the artery that runs along the spine and down to the heart? We did. So that explains why she bled out so quickly. Not a bad deal. Still... I don't know if all females have 0% on the genetics, by the way, but still worth a fair bit of credits, especially since it was just standing there after taking another. And we do have enough to purchase another area. Now, I'm not sure where we're going to purchase just yet. I do plan for it to be here on the Nez Perce Valley map as well. But let's actually head up through here a little bit farther. I think I'd like to go right along the north border of the map up into here. And if we can find another moose, more elk, a bear, anything like that, that'll be great. Otherwise, we'll head over to Transylvania and do some red deer hunting. Well, once again, I believe we're looking at a moose that is one we want to take out. A one-star adult. And if we can get a better look at him when he gets a bit closer, and the wind is not good, so that's not a guarantee. He looked to be rather uneven. One side looked okay, and one side really was lacking palmation. So if he keeps walking this way, if we just kind of sit still, I think he'll at least get close enough to where we can see better. The angle is not that great, but we've seen this 338 do really, really well, so maybe a frontal shot could be in play here, but ideally, he just kind of keeps walking and maybe turns broadside for us once he gets into the open. And we can see a little bit better there. That left side of his is definitely lacking, and he's kind of getting fairly broadside, so I think, especially given the fact that the wind is still not in our favor, we want to get this shot off. I just need to get past a bit of this brush. Luckily, he doesn't seem to know we're here. I think, though... Goodness gracious. That is nuts. To see a moose just... basically pile up. From a shot from the 338 that we know is not hitting it in the heart or anything like that. It's almost shocking every time that it happens. But that was a bit far back single lung, some liver kind of shockwave damage, and even a little bit of stomach in there, but just fell immediately and 45% on the genetics. Definitely one that was worthwhile going ahead and taking out. And again, despite the 173 pounds of meat loss, still 757 credits, not a bad deal. And I actually did see, somewhere up that way, was a campsite that we haven't discovered, so we're going to go over there. I'm not sure. That must be it right there. And uh, I think on that note, if we haven't randomly spotted anything from a distance as we go up into that clearing, probably we'll be heading to Transylvania. I think we're going to have to make use of this campsite. It's in a really good open spot here. And uh, I'll show on the map. I know some people probably want to avoid these spoilers of knowing where these things are and, and wanting to find them. So a heads up before I open the map to take a look at where it's at, but just kind of sell, and I've been right by it. I came up this way the first time we ever bought access to this area. I like where that's at. It's situated in a really nice spot, I think, to have success. But as far as our hunt here on Nez Perce Valley, nothing all that big. I think primarily we just shot one stars, maybe one two star, but I think we got a lot of sort of poor genetics out of the gene pool, and hopefully that's going to help us going forward. So. We'll head to Transylvania then, and see if we can do any better with the Red Deer. And fortunately, much like the campsite we just discovered back in Nez Perce Valley, there is one here on Transylvania that gives us a pretty good starting point for some Red Deer. And we've got a herd kind of walking down the hill, including a stag that definitely needs to be taken out. He is a one-star adult, and you can just tell by the antlers. We've seen one-star young deer with way better potential than that, so... What we're going to do is going to be kind of similar to the elk, 
my best guess is that guy's gonna be relatively low fitness just based on the size of the antlers. And if we can call him in and get another step towards unlocking those higher level calls, that would be a huge plus since he's right here for us. The problem seems to be for whatever reason, he's actually not wanting to respond to the call. We'll give him one more chance here, but we've actually done a bit of calling. And they just happen to be kind of walking this way, but as you can see, he's just sort of feeding along. And I was really hoping to get a similar kind of interaction to what we had with the elk. I haven't gotten to see a red deer roar up close yet. We had them in the forest ahead of us roaring the one time and it was really cool. So hopefully eventually we can get one to do that close range. And I don't know, maybe he's higher fitness than we would think, but given those antlers, I just can't see it. So I think we might let him kind of walk a little more broadside for us. Let's not hit the toe behind him, or the hide, I should say. That is a thing, by the way. You can get pass throughs and hit multiple deer. Now, I'm not sure with a red deer, if a 338, even that big a caliber, is going to go straight through. But you can get it, say, with the 338 on a whitetail deer, for instance. So not something we need to do wounding a second deer. Now, definitely a good solid hit. Looks like he actually is going to be going down right out there in the sunlight. Not a bad deal, and we unlock Catch Your Breath now. I'm not sure what that one is either. Apparently that's only hitting heart, lung, or artery ten times while holding your breath. Maybe I haven't been taking advantage of that enough, but regardless, it was enough to take that stag down. And I think get another one out of the gene pool that we don't want to let around to age. So we'll check on the genetics. Because he wasn't coming in, I wonder if that could be used to judge the genetic potential specifically of younger deer when it's not as obvious based on the antlers. Again, I think this guy had to be fairly low, although, you know, you look at the collar and the way that it says it works, attracts low fitness males. So the question is, what qualifies as low fitness? Does it have to be, you know, especially low or is it just anything that's not really high potential? According to this, as we double lunged him there at 45 yards, 77% actually. Better than I would have guessed given that rack. So he's probably a very young adult. Now, still not enough to where I'd expect him to get anywhere near 5 star, but a better stag than I would have assumed. Lost about what we've been losing on everything else, close to 200 pounds of meat, still 335 credits on that. And uh, I still think probably worthwhile taking him out, but again, we haven't actually had the red deer collar work yet. There was a couple of young stags in a herd where we tried it, and those two happened to be fairly high uh, genetics. We had a 90% one that we did shoot and one that we left. That might be a really good way to determine it. If they don't come in, they're probably high enough fitness that it maybe is worth leaving them around. Well, this is probably bad news for a roe deer because we haven't shot one yet, and I'd kind of like the opportunity to take one out. There's a mature two-star standing there, and naturally, we finally have one that hasn't spooked on a day where we have nothing but the 338. So I think when he lifts his head, we'll try to take the shot or even as he's broadside there. That was a lot of blood from a small creature. Is that him? I'm not sure if that was another one or the same one, but that was by far the most violent, I guess, bullet impact that I've seen on anything. I would even say significantly outdoing some of the shotgun impacts on birds. So we'll see if he dropped or what the situation there was, but I haven't even gotten to take an up-close look at the models yet. Every time there's rodeo around, either we're shooting something else or they end up spooking. So it was an opportunity, maybe not the best one. And I thought he was right in here. In fact, he was. He went absolutely nowhere. Probably a, a fitting way. That he ended up dropping, given the fact that he got hit by a freight train of a bullet. And uh, I don't think we're going to try to pose behind that one. So, double lunged him. And if there were four lined up, I, we probably could have gotten all them with the 338. As you can see, it was all the way through both lungs and out the other side. Above the required hit energy to kill one. So, two or three for sure, if they were lined up from the 338. That... Honestly, is a pretty decent looking road to your bug. 64.05%. We retained 18 credits worth of meat after a 63 pound meat loss. We'll sell for that and 
you know, they do look pretty darn good. That's gonna have to be something we place some more emphasis on. Maybe on a day where we have a smaller caliber in our loadout, though. We've not had it all that much, but I love when we get to encounter the Red Deer, like, in these rolling hills, and that is a one-star mature. Definitely way past his prime, if I had to guess. And two more up in here, a one-star adult, and then that guy at the top looks like he may have some potential. So once he kind of steps out there, we'll try to get a better idea of what to actually go for. I'd like to see adult on that, because if he is, he may be something, but it is a two-star mature, in which case probably we'll take him. And if we get lucky enough, maybe we can try to get the one-star mature as well. But if I had to guess, this guy is far more likely to just die of old age sooner. So probably we want the two-star. They're about 300 yards out, but given what the 338 has done so far today, I'm betting we can get him. I'd like for that leg to go a little further forward. He's kind of blocking a lot of the vitals with that shoulder there. So just like a half a step would make a heck of a difference. He did it with the back leg. That's what we're looking for. And my guess is, especially based on the pink blood, he's not going far. That is amazing to see just how quickly they go down. And I know it's obviously a bit overpowered. It is a hunting tier 6 weapon, and red tier are tier 6. But given the fact that there is that much meat wastage, clearly the idea is something more in the area of 300 wind mag. I'm actually hoping to see, someday down the road, maybe some other weapons added. Because I do feel like there, there's some lower caliber tier 6 weapon they could potentially add. I'm not sure what would be the ideal move, but... Even the 300 sometimes feels like it's a little bit big on the Red Deer, but pretty cool to get that guy. Definitely, I would say, our best kill thus far today. And I'm not sure if he's in a position to take a decent picture. We'll see with the grass. I think that's kind of going to keep him hidden. Actually, that's not too bad. I think we can make that work. I'm going to say that will do just fine, especially since he is a 2-star. So let's see what this guy is. I wonder if he's past his prime or just a poor genetic male. Definitely mostly penetration damage on the on the double lung, but a bit of just shockwave damage there for the right lung. As for the genetics, 86.74%. So in all likelihood, this guy's kind of past his prime, if I had to guess. That or just reaching into the mature, but I believe you want to see at least a three-star mature to have any potential of being a 5-star down the line. So it could be either way. Now, he's not that kind of gray color, so that may indicate he's actually a younger mature that maybe would have gotten into a high 4-star if we let him go. And honestly, there, there's so much unknown here. I'm really not sure. I could be wrong about how that's working, but I think you're looking for like 90-ish percent to have a chance of being a 5-star. Maybe 86% would have been enough. Hard to say exactly. Given the fact that he was a two-star, I feel like we were all good, but that is now our second red stag. I feel like we're doing a little bit better red deer hunting now, and it's probably just because it's finally become clear that running around and trying to spot them in the distance is not the move. Just taking it slowly and trying to glass around on all these hillsides, it tends to result better. So I actually thought, as we are getting ready to wrap up, it might be fun to play with the potential for a bullet pass through and a double kill. And I think Wild Boar might be a decent test with the 338 Lapua. Now, I can't promise we're going to get anything lined up good enough to get a double kill. And I also can't promise that we're going to be accurate enough to actually have it work. But I want to try it and just kind of see what we can get to happen with a weapon that is so powerful. So if we can get two to line up, actually that may work right here. If that one would have sat still, it may have happened. So this is probably going to be the challenge we're going to run into. They do tend to travel pretty close together, so I think it's bound to happen. We just need to be patient until it does. And I'd like to ideally get a male in this, but if it is two females, that is just what it is. We might have a chance there. I think we got them both. It certainly looks as though we got them both. They both acted like they were good solid hits, so we'll have to try to at least somewhat pay attention to what goes where. And best I can tell, the wild boar don't have a great kind of stumbling animation that is really obvious to see. They kind of just run until they go down, but 
there was that almost mirrored animation, which it'd be cool if they ended up being separate animations, and I think there are multiple animations for the hits, but it looked to me like they kind of did the same thing, which may indicate that they were both actually struck in the lungs. So we'll get over here and take a look and see what is going on. Blood here, that is pink blood. And is there any additional blood behind it? There actually is, although it's red blood. Now, because the 338 is so powerful, that red blood may still end up being a lethal shot, but we'll focus on the pink blood first and see if we can figure out where that one went. And not a bad track there. Now, one of the reasons I took that shot so quickly is because this was a male. I think it was the, yeah, one star adult. And naturally using the 338, that is a pretty major meat loss, 140 pounds of the 187 that we had. But we'll sell that and we'll at least attempt to track down the other one. Now, I have seen on occasion non-pink blood resulting in a kill shot. It just depends on the animal and the caliber and all that. So maybe, again, especially because we did use such a big gun, and I think... I don't know if that's pink or red blood. This is probably from the one that we shot. So, might be tough given the fact that they generally ran the same direction. And actually, I should have looked at the harvest screen a little bit more. I went back and checked. The bullet exited the wild boar just below the recommended energy for a kill shot. So I think, unfortunately, the second one's gonna live. But that was something I wanted to test out. I've been asked about it quite a bit. It is possible, it just depends on the species. And I think, maybe a little bit closer. Wild Boar could be doable. I think at 150 yards or however far we shot, it might not quite work as well as you may want it. But I think that actually on that note is going to do it for this video. We managed to get a lot of mature animals with lower star ratings. So hopefully that's going to help us in the future. And it was cool to come out with the 338 and just see the power of this gun from the drop shot on the elk close range to the moose to even some of the other things that we shot, like the road deer and the wild boar. Definitely a powerful weapon, and if you're maybe not so much into the tracking side of this game, it can be really, really effective. This is really unfortunate for this fox, but uh... Since it's there, actually there are two. Second one we shot just over top of. I don't know if it's kind of confused about where to go. We can try to get it as it slows down, but it is pretty much speeding up that hill, so we'll take one bonus kill, which if we have any remaining meat from that, I would be absolutely shocked. It was somewhere right down in here, I think. And actually, I didn't know that. The foxes light up like waterfowl, since they are a smaller game species, but this was a right lung shot. Just a mature female. 13 pounds, obviously not going to get much for that with the two credits, but anyway, one more example of the 338 being a little bit overpowered, and again, if you don't like the tracking, definitely a good weapon to carry around for that. I'll probably go back to the 300 for things like Red Deer, Elk, and Moose, but it was really cool to get to see the power of this gun, and cool to come out for a little 338,000 subscriber special using this weapon right here. And I think on that note, that is going to officially do it. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for 338,000 once again, and I will see you in the next video.